Welcome to the Research Sofa. I'm Simon Gilbody, Director of the Closing the Gap Network. And uh, it feels like sprung has, spring has sprung. Um, so uh, I'm going to be interviewing our guest today outside. So um, the daffodils are rising and we are hoping that spring is on its way. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Professor Kathy Cresswell to the Closing the Gap Research Sofa. Kathy is Professor of Developmental Clinical Psychology at the University of Oxford and is also the director of one of our partner UKRI networks, the Emerging Minds Network. And people might know Kathy from her work and She's also a very powerful advocate for the mental health of young people. So welcome, Kathy. Hello, thanks for having me. Now, Kathy, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? And I'm also going to ask you a little bit about the, um, uh, the mental health incubator project. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I think you've covered a lot of it already. So, as you said, I'm a professor of developmental clinical psychology. So, my professional background is as a clinical psychologist. But since qualifying, I've had uh, roles that have been very much focused around research, particularly trying to improve access to effective psychological treatments for children, and young people who have common mental health difficulties. So most of my work is all around that. But as you said, I'm also directing the Emerging Minds Network, which is very much about trying to promote more research that uh, enables young people to um, well, well, to prevent, to promote good mental health, to prevent mental health difficulties in children and young people, and also to make sure people get um, evidence-based interventions when they first need them. And that's really important work, and it's become perhaps even more important and more apparent during the lockdown and the pandemic, where kathy has been um, a very powerful advocate for the mental health of young people, as we said. But um, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about the Mental Health Research Incubator, which is a really exciting project that um, um, prompted us to invite you to the research sofa today. Yeah, yeah, well, it's great to be able to, to tell you all about it. So tell us a little bit about what is the Mental Health Research Incubator project? Yeah. So the, um, well, the, the incubators generally are initiatives that have been supported by the National Institute of Health Research to try to build capacity in areas of health research that are where we currently just don't have enough capacity and where there's a clear need and where the NIHR have seen a particular, have, you know, have, have seen areas of being of particular priority. So mental health is one of those areas where I think, I don't think anybody would question that there's a clear need for more understanding and improvements um, in healthcare, but also we really lack research capacity. And obviously there are lots of different professional groups and people from different backgrounds that can contribute to mental health research. So through the incubator, what we're trying to do is to find ways to really bring more people into mental health research. So to really try to inspire people to follow a mental health research career, but also to give them sort of practical tips and advice and to also help people develop networks so that they can identify the right people to talk to to help them move along in their career so the incubator is really about trying to find ways to do all of those things I mean that sounds so exciting it sounds like just the sort of thing that I wish had been around when I was starting my research career but could you tell us a little bit about what you've managed to do so far in the mental health research incubator yeah, so we are we are at an early stage. So um, with Louise Howard, um, I started up the incubator activities probably about a year ago, um, but we got properly up and running when we were joined by um, B, who's working with us, really making everything happen, along with um, Kaya, who supports on the administrative side of things. So since we've had both of them, which was about last summer, um, we've been able to move things forward at a bit more of a pace. So the main thing that we've done is to set up our website so that we've got one central place to hold all of our resources uh, as they develop and for a place for people to come to. So on the website, which is, I don't know off by heart, mentalhealthresearch.org.uk, um, people can go there and they can basically have a look at um, lots of different information for lots of different professional groups. So there's specific advice for psychologists like me, um, medics, social workers, allied health professionals, behavioral scientists, um, researchers with lived experience backgrounds, 
and actually people are pointing out to us gaps there all the time so we're going to be adding new pages people can also go there and see lots of case studies of people who follow different routes through mental health research careers which we hope will really kind of inspire people but also help people to realize that these are kind of normal people that we can all relate to mm. in different ways and actually maybe these are the sorts of career paths that that people might feel they're able to follow and would like to follow so that's been our main activity so far putting all that together and there's also lots of signposting on the site um, and then very recently on the site we've launched a, a map uh, so it's it actually was intended to be a map of the UK but it just ends up being a map of the world so <laughs> it ends up being a bit bigger than we'd planned but essentially people can go on there and put themselves on the map so that we can basically see where mental health research is happening and we're able to people put in their professional background so that we're able to see right you know where does there seem to be a critical mass in this particular area of people with this particular professional background but also really importantly to see where the gaps are so what we hope is through people putting themselves on the map people will be able to connect with each other. They might realize there's someone just down the road that they didn't know that was doing something that's really relevant to them. But equally, we'll be able to look at it and look at it with funders and say, look, we seem to have gaps in these particular areas. Um, so we hope it will be really helpful, both for networking and for helping to fill the gaps as we go forward. It's been quite exciting because we see the odd um, person just pop up in all sorts of places. So um, it's been quite fun to see that emerge. Oh, that sounds so exciting. And I've seen how much you've achieved in such a short period of time. And I really like your ambition. So not just drawing a picture of the um, a map of the UK, but um, having a map of the world there. So I like the notion of world domination. So um, looking forwards, what is it you're planning to do in the near future, Cathy? Yeah, so the next stage is also quite exciting because actually it really is quite wide open. We want to continue to do all the things we've been doing, building up a collection of case studies so that we can inspire, inspire people and make sure people get the help they need. But oh, actually the main thing we need to do now is be responsive to what we're learning along the way. So we've been hearing through collecting the case studies, we've been hearing from lots of mental health researchers about what's helped them, but also what challenges they've faced. So the next thing is to think about how we can address those. So we plan to start to put on some events to um, be able to bring early career researchers together um, to address some of the issues that are common. Um, also to help to continue to connect people because mentoring is something that people have really highlighted across the case studies. But actually the main thing is to try to identify as we're going along we know where are the bottlenecks, where are the gaps, and what do they need to do? What do we need to do to address those? And we hope going forwards we'll be able to work with funders as well to look at you know the things that we're finding and how they may be able to address them. If we're finding that particular professions have particular bottlenecks at, at particular points, you know, what, what might funders need to do to help address some of those things to help people progress through mental health research careers. So sounds really exciting, sounds really ambitious. I know that I've been encouraging people within my group at the University of York to become involved, but um, tell people who are watching us today how they can become involved in the mental health research incubator. Hmm. Well, there are a number of ways people can get involved. The simplest way is to go onto the website and get themselves on the map, because then we know where they are, other people know where they are, and uh, it makes it easy for others to make connections. Another way is to get in touch with us and volunteer to be a case study so that we can share their story with others in the hope that it might inspire and encourage others to follow mental health research careers. So those are two very immediate ways. Also, if people feel that their professional background isn't covered by the site, we're really keen to be adding new tabs for those. So, you know, we're really keen people let us know and, and then maybe can help us out with filling those gaps. Yeah. And then also we do have, um, yeah. we've got a really active steering group who kind of help, you know, make all the decisions about where we go. And we also have a very active advisory group who represent the different potential beneficiaries of the incubator. So people from across different stages in their career, across different professional backgrounds. So if people are keen to get involved more at that level, at the strategic level, we're all, always really keen to expand and to include people you know, from more diverse backgrounds, more diverse geographical areas and so on. So lots of different ways to get in touch. And then obviously another really simple thing is that people can follow us on Twitter and make sure that all everything that we do gets spread far and wide. So just plug that one is that uh, the Twitter handle is at 
MHR Incubator. Excellent. So we've got a Twitter handle and we're going to put a link to the website in the research so for today. And um, so just remind our viewers what the website is again, Cathy. Yeah, the website is mentalhealthresearch.org.uk. Brilliant. OK, so, Cathy, thank you for your time this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you and um, we look forward to working with you with the Mental Health Research Incubator in the future. So thank you again. Thanks very much.